So now that we've covered the basics of the lines, circles, ellipses, let's determine how to make modifications to the lines that we've drawn. Let me go ahead and create some lines here that we can use to get started. I'll just draw a couple boxes. I'm holding shift to align, click, click. In this, so here are a couple figures we can use. And we want to learn how to modify these. So the first thing we want to do is learn how to move something. So as you recall in a previous video, I showed you the shift to turn your whatever tool you're in temporarily becomes a selection. And I can window that. And now it's a move command. The easiest way to do this is a keyboard shortcut, obviously. If you're using my keyboard shortcuts, this will be an F5. F5, and here it's drag, enter the drag reference point. So it's gonna ask us for two points, which is gonna define the translation vector, fancy talk. And in this case, we're going 45 degrees and we'll change the R to 80. We've gone 80 feet at a 45 degree angle. We could do that again, F5. Move, we can visually do it, we can, we can enter specific coordinates. So moving is pretty simple. A couple of things I'd like to share with you with regards to moving. Again, I'm using shift, selecting. I prefer to use my translation vector, my two points, somewhere in a clear area of the drawing. This prevents me from inadvertently clicking points. On the other hand, if I want to click this point so that I can perfectly align it to say this point, then I'm going to need to click on that corner and then snap to this other corner. And now I've aligned these endpoints precisely. Now a couple of other options we have here. This is an interesting tool, it's called Element Snap. And we're going to do something similar to that again. I'm clicking in a clear space. And you'll see that the nodes become these clear or these open squares. And those open squares are able to attach the different points. And you can see there, for example, the, the one square gets larger and darker, and that's going to snap perfectly to that corner. So these are this is another way to use snapping, but you don't have to actually use specific points. You can actually align to any point at any time. A useful tool, um, not something I use all that often. I prefer the explicit method where I'm going to actually select the two corners or the corner. I think that's a little bit more robust, but that feature is available, and that's up here on the main toolbar right there. So now let's look at some other choices. Again, we'll hit Shift, and F5 was Move. Well, F9 is Copy. Everything is exactly the same. I'm going to move this point to this point, except it'll leave the original. So if I hit F5, I can move it. F9 makes a copy. So that's why I have the shortcut set up this way. So it's F5 is move, F9 is copy. Similarly, we have, using shift to select, F6 is a rotate. Now the first thing I look down here, it says enter rotation, center point, whatever corner I want to, or whatever point anywhere in the drawing for that matter, I want to rotate about. Then I give a starting angle and an ending angle. And if I want to rotate this exactly 45 degrees, then I can use my snap line. So similar to the way F5 and F9, it, F5 is the move, F9 is a copy, F6 is a rotate, F10 is rotate a copy. So again, that was shift to deselect the one line. We're going to go through in another in the next video and go through all of the selection tools very carefully. F10 is select and rotate a copy. It left the original. F5 is move, F6 is rotate. F7, go in here and hold, continuing to hold shift, I can deselect that line. F11 is a mirror. 
So I give the mirror line. You can see as I change the, the mirror line, the element that's the destination is going to change. I click and that mirrored that element. And F7 is mirror and it flips it to the other side, but it removes the original. F11 will leave a copy. So I've set this up so that it's very consistent all the way across. So this, that moving, rotating, and mirror are very easy to do, very quick to use the keyboard. And because the keyboards are laid out with groupings of four, it's easy for your finger to kind of find those locations. If you're using a laptop, then you're going to need to make sure that your F5 is an F5. A lot of the laptops have a system set up such that it's a function key, and you need to hold uh, a special key to hit F5, so it's not the volume or some other computer function. There's usually a setting in for your laptop, sometimes it's in the BIOS, that will make your function keys function keys. And I encourage you, if you're going to be using ArchiCAD often, you know, the, the amount of times you're changing the volume is a lot less than the number of times you're going to be moving elements if you're going to be using that computer for uh, drafting purposes. Okay, So that is the move, rotate, mirror, and then the copy versions of those as well. So let's get some more geometry out here and take a look at some other things that we can do. So the in this once I have these selected, we're going to now start looking at the pet palette. And the pet palette is set up in the same, so drag, which is ArchiCAD's way of saying move, rotate, mirror, so F5, F6, F7. Uh, so you can use the pet palette, the really no disadvantage of the pet palette, except if you use the pet palette, you don't have an option to do a start point and an end point. So you need to make sure that the point that you have selected when you engage the drag command or the move command is the correct point, because that's the point you're gonna use as your target point. So that's really the only reason I prefer to use the keyboard is because it gives me an option to give me an explicit start and an explicit end point when I'm, when I'm making a move. A couple other cool tricks here. If I hit F5 or move, if I hit Control, that will basically turn it into a copy command. So you can use the F5 and hit Cont Control once. You'll see the plus underneath my cursor. That turns it into a move. If I do the same thing, F5, Control, Alt, I get two pluses, and now I have a multiple move, and I can continue to make copies until I hit escape. So that's a nice trick. This works with all of the commands. So if I want to make multiple rotations, I can hit F6, Control, Alt, and I can continue to rotate about that same point as many as I'd like, and you can just continue on as much as you want. Now, interesting note if you do rotate a copy using F10 these choices are not available to you which is a little counterintuitive but not that big of a deal so that's how we move and drag and or move or drag whichever term you prefer rotate mirror and you can do multiple copies and that's going to get you a long way to getting elements where you want now if you have a particular line and you want to just move an endpoint, then it's a matter of just selecting the line using this stretch tool, and that allows me to move that endpoint wherever I want. I just drag it, click, click to the location I want. Here I hover over the line for a second until I get the midpoint, and now that line's directly over the point. So that's another option available to you. Now there's another interesting tool that's at first a little confusing, but very powerful. And this is called the stretched command. 
and the stretch command uses the marquee, I'm going to marquee the elements that I want to stretch. And the way you think of this is whatever endpoints or nodes are within the marquee are the ones that are going to move. So if I put the marquee down and hit F8, F8 is the stretch command, and I click and click, that's going to move those endpoints. So there's actually four endpoints, one endpoint for this line, one endpoint for this line, another endpoint, the other endpoint for this line, and the endpoint for this line. So all four of those are moving together. Now it's a little more interesting when we do an offset something like that. Or if we have geometry that looks maybe like this, I'm holding the shift to align, and I want to put the marquee through here, and all the endpoints within the marquee are going to move, and so that's going to be a stretch right there. So that's a very powerful tool under certain circumstances. You'll learn how to use that with practice, and that's the F8 in conjunction with the marquee tool. In the next section, we're going to be looking at how to do more advanced selections. And I think you'll appreciate having the flexibility that ArchiCAD gives you to do that. Until then, we'll see you soon.